Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. I've made a series of predictions on this channel, and this is my riskiest one yet. As of 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, November 10th, that is to say Friday or today, the FAA is going to release Starship's launch license. What the hell am I basing this on? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Been tossing these updates at you fast and furious pretty much every single day because there's been so much to cover. And by the way, a particular update that you guys generally have not been tuning into is the Fusion Drive update. And that's one of the main reasons that I'm here in Milton Keynes is to cover what Pulsar Fusion is doing. And I'll tell you something, got some very very interesting updates all in person got to see a lot of their technology and equipment in person as well and I am confident in their estimates that they will be at least attempting an orbital test of fusion propulsion by 2027 don't believe me well you need to have a look at the tour in the meantime Starship, that is what all of us are so interested in. Even though I have a reputation of being somewhat of a naysayer when it comes to Starship, let me tell you something, I could not be more excited about what's coming. So, at this moment, I am 90% sure... Uh, 80% sure, 60% sure that we are going to get an FAA license issued by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. Why do I think that? Well, for one thing, I have a direct line to the FAA that I didn't have back in April. But of course, they're not telling me anything that other journalists aren't getting at this point. So that's nothing special. It's more based on everything SpaceX has been doing and everything that the FAA did the last time all of this was going on. And although I feel that Starship definitely has a future, and although I feel that Starship will ultimately become the rocket that takes us across the solar system, as I have mentioned many times in the past, Elon Musk's latest statement about one to two months or something along those lines before the next launch of Starship is absolute fantasy. The guy seriously needs a reality check, especially when you consider that he's seen all of this far more up close and personal than I did yesterday. So some bets are far from a sure thing, and some bets are. And that one that I made back in April of this year, well, that's one of the most certain bets that I ever made. That no way was it going to be six to eight weeks, or even six months, before Starship could launch again. And indeed, we're closing in on seven months since the last time Starship took flight. And don't tell me about how the FAA has been holding it all up, otherwise it would have flown by now. Starship has been stacking and unstacking, checking and rechecking that hot staging ring for the last several weeks. It's only really been ready for the last eight or nine days. However, if you're watching this after 5 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time on Friday, well, obviously I was wrong about this bet, but I don't think I'm very far off because all of the indicators right now strongly suggest that the FAA is days away or perhaps hours away from issuing a launch license. First of all, we have notices to airmen and notices to mariners, also known as NOTAMs or NOTARs, that have been issued both in the Hawaii region and also in the Gulf of Mexico. The Hawaii Nautum is an interesting notice, something that actually has been lacking up to this point, at least for recent launch dates. It was actually creating some speculation as to whether or not SpaceX really intended
intends to carry out a full-fledged orbit because their flight plan that they released recently, well, SpaceX was being a bit vague as to exactly where in the Pacific they were planning to splash down with the orbiter. It could have been in a less populated region than each, even off the coast of Hawaii. However, now they've finally gotten a lot more specific. However, the most important development has been the installation of the flight termination system, which has happened in the last 24 hours. That is a development that happens only when the rocket is about to lift off. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to unstack this thing once you have the flight termination system installed and primed. Yes, you can go back up and deactivate it, but it's not something that SpaceX really prefers to do. Now, up to this point, the FAA has categorically denied that they have already issued a launch license to SpaceX, and they simply haven't notified the general public yet. And I happen to believe my contact over at the FAA, he's been a really good source of information and extremely cooperative, actually. I've come away from my relationship with the FAA over the last several weeks with a pretty positive view of how they communicate with journalists and with the public in general. I think they're doing their best to try to make this process as easy as possible given the circumstances. Lots of people disagree with me on this, but as I've said a number of times in the past, given everything that happened on April 20th, from the destruction of the launch pad to the colossal amount of damage that the rocket no doubt took from that maelstrom of concrete, to all of the dust that got spread over an enormous region of South Texas, to the loss of control of the rocket and the subsequent failure of the flight termination system to activate for nearly a full minute after SpaceX lost control of the rocket, well, all of those things were significant problems during the launch, and a lot of them were preventable given the fact that everybody, including myself, had been talking about how ill-prepared the launch pad was for the takeoff of the most powerful rocket in human history. I think it's actually very impressive that the FAA has managed to get everything done on their side, and everything, by the way, is done on their side as quickly as they've managed to do it. It's only the Fish and Wildlife Service that's holding things up, and even they are not being unreasonable in my opinion, at least if they get everything done by, say, early next week because the deluge system that SpaceX installed, well, that's a major modification with a hell of a lot of water flowing through what is essentially an active construction zone. That's something that any environmental agency is going to pay some attention to and something that could have held up this process a lot longer if the Fish and Wildlife Service had insisted that SpaceX make some modifications to the launch facility before they would would permit anything to happen. And yet, it appears that everything is almost ready to go. And the reason I think that it's going to be going forward at 5 p.m. today is because that's what the FAA did last time. They released their launch license notification a few minutes before close of business on Friday, the weekend before the 20th, in order to avoid any sort of last-minute legal challenges. Any effort efforts on the part of environmental organizations to try to get a judge to issue some sort of last second injunction to halt the launch. By doing this right before the weekend, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for anybody to put a barrier in front of a future Starship launch. Once again, this is pure speculation, but it's based on what has happened in the past, and I feel very strongly that if the FAA does not issue this license in the next few hours, they're going to be issuing it at the beginning of next week. And so what can we expect? Well, frankly, if SpaceX manages to get Starship past the Kármán line, that's going to be a success in their book and in my book as well. They don't need to complete a total orbit of the Earth, nor should we expect them to on this next launch. There have been so many untested modifications that have been made to this rocket at this point, the most significant of which is the hot staging ring modification, which, by the way, has been 
tested, retested, and checked and rechecked and fiddled with and God knows what else on all the occasions that SpaceX has been stacking and unstacking Starship lately. As far as I'm concerned, that is a very problematic part of this launch, and even though the hot staging solution will allow Starship to carry significantly heavier payloads in the future on this particular launch, I think it adds to the chances of something going wrong during the ascent. Not dangerously wrong. I think that if the hot staging ring goes wrong in some ways, it's going to happen somewhere close to the Kármán line and not anywhere close to a populated region. However, that doesn't mean there's no danger at all. Because, as I said before, many, many changes, untested changes, have been made to this rocket at this point. Any one of which could cause an anomaly to take place either on the pad or just over the pad. If something like that happens, well, I don't think anybody watching is going to be very happy about being there for the experience. As I've said many times in the past, a full-fledged explosion of the biggest rocket in human history is not going to be something you want to be anywhere close to and I really hope that something like that doesn't happen. But for what it's worth, I think it's highly unlikely. I think that SpaceX is going to get Starship off the ground before this time next week. And I think it's going to be a very exciting time regardless of what happens. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Lab Padre for generously allowing me to use their footage. And in addition, thank you to the 10 new Patreon members who have signed up this month month alone and if you'd like to join them and help me travel to Boca Chica and other destinations in the future well all the details are in the description please like please subscribe and as always stay angry about space